Welcome to a little personal vlog. I just want to show you some of the plants that I've got going on. I'm still sorting out my brain things. So I had a couple plants going out in the garden box that we built earlier in the year, but a frost came through and it kind of toasted most of the plants. So despite the fact that it just like fried a lot of the leaves, some of the plants still kind of survived. I didn't get any potatoes out of that potato bucket that I had because instead some of the tomatoes took off like wildfire and I think the tomato plants ate the potatoes. But that's okay because instead I'm getting tomatoes. I've had one cherry tomato that was really ripe and that came through and now I've got a couple more that I want to show you. But before we go outside I want to show you the calendar type thing that I'm working with. So where do I put this? So I made this calendar um, for Washington. It's a year calendar. It has like every month going down on like two rows. Now that I'm looking at it, it's so chopped up. I'm not a huge fan of this. Basically, this tells me when I should be direct sowing seeds and when I should start indoors and transplant outdoors. So for example, here it says turnips and parsley on April 29th and it's written in blue. So that means I need to plant those outdoors. So this is would be if I was up in Washington. So I had to remake one so that I would have one for down here in Louisiana. So I remade it and I filled out the entire thing. So that is the expected last frost date. That is the last day that it can possibly drop to or below 36 degrees, I think, 34, something like that. If it drops below that, plants will die. But because Louisiana is slightly warmer, it means I can start planting seeds kind of like towards the end of January, which is in like a month, month and a half. But now I have a weird decision to make because I made this and I spent a decent amount of time on this and it's like a nice little compact thing, but it doesn't include January, which I don't think it needs to. And it doesn't include the harvest dates after October, which again, I don't think I really need because I can just look at the plants and then determine when I need to harvest them. So this is okay. But recently I ordered this. My partner and I are very visual people, so we need to be able to see things. Otherwise we will forget they exist. So I made a one year calendar and I printed it. Unfortunately, there was a misprint uh, so I had to reorder it, which means that I am going to have like this, which still has all of the calendar dates. So it's still a good print. There's still like stuff I can do with this. I'm probably just gonna cut off that and then I'll just have the calendar part of it. This is bigger, there's more room, and it also shows when weekends are, but I don't know if I wanna completely remake this calendar so that I have another one because this is fine, but also this is better. Maybe I could use this as like a diary thing and list what I am doing instead. I think I like that idea. I'll use this to list what I'm doing in the garden and this to show what I can and should be doing in the garden. So for now, that's my current plan. This is a good calendar. And then I'm just gonna put that here, I think. I'm gonna move this poster, I think, to the office and then I'll probably just pin them up here. But right now I wanna show you the cool things that I've got going on outside while there's still light out. So first of all, we've got our Christmas tree up. I don't know if I wanna add like a skirting thing to it. I'm still deciding. But this is one of the things I wanted to show you. So I've got four plants going inside. Um, I rescued this ponytail palm from outside. Someone was throwing it away, so it was right next to the garbage. So I just took it because it's still alive. There's no reason not to have it. And then this is a variegated pothos that I stole a leaf from. So at my dentist's office, they have this really beautiful variegated pothos. And so I stole a leaf off of it because it kind of looked like it was suffering and pothos are like, indestructible so I grabbed a leaf to see if I could propagate it and it hasn't died yet and it's growing a new root I recently put it in this potting soil so hopefully it will be okay we'll see that one's a long-term indoor houseplant project both those are my favorite house plants. And then I finally got some chives going. These chives did not come from this pack. This pack is just a label because every seed that I planted from this never germinated. I think the seeds may have just been too old, so I'm just using it as a label. It's empty now. These chives are actually from saved seeds from the chive plants that I got up in Washington. And then this is a pepper plant that Joe's mother gave me and I am not entirely sure why this one is turning yellow. I don't know if it needs more food. So if anyone knows why one of these pepper plants is turning yellow, please let me know. 
I would like to keep this for as long as I can. I like pepper plants, they're very nice. And I'm probably just gonna keep it in that container so that I can bring it indoors so I can have it forever. This noise, that noise makes it sound like it's raining all the time. So this is my rock tumbler. Joe got it for me for Christmas. So it takes like an entire month to tumble rocks. We just changed it out yesterday. So this will be going for six to eight days. That thing has been going for a little over two weeks and it still has two more weeks to go. And then over here, this is what I was talking about, the tomato plant that has taken over my potato bucket. There are no more potatoes in here. It's been surviving. I'm very impressed with this tomato plant. And then over here in the window, I have a corn that I started last year. This one I had outside and it died in the frost. So I put a couple more kernels of corn. So we'll see how it goes. Those are some kale, red Russian kale. And those are definitely Malabar spinach. And this is a mint plant that I got from Joe's mom. It's been raining, so the corner in the backyard has kind of flooded. Also, we've got mushrooms. They were like bright red, and then they washed out to be this like brown. And then sometimes they mold. So this is what's left after that one frost. So I've got some new basil plants coming in, but they didn't die. They just kind of were injured. Like those basil plants are not fully dead. So I've just kind of left them. And then the okra that was right here fully died. But this one, the leaves just toasted off and then it kept going. It just grew new leaves. And now it's got multiple okra growing at like every nodule. So there's like one here, one there, and one up here. This okra is still going pretty strong. I don't know if it's gonna make it through the winter, but I'm gonna let it try. And then this was just kind of an experiment. So uh, this tomato plant, I just chopped off a branch from the one that's inside, and then I buried half of it in the ground and left some of it sticking out. And it just, it's doing great. I'm kind of amazed. Um, the frost killed part of the top of it, but it just kept going. It just even threw off another shoot. Look at that, which is uh, very impressive. It's even got some little tomatoes going. This one's almost completely ripe. And then this one's still green, but I'm so proud of this little tomato plant. And then over there, as you can see, I'm also very impressed with this. So I took the bottom of an onion and I just buried it and it's also doing incredibly well. So I might end up with some onions. Very cool. I also have a garden bed coming today. I decided to order myself a metal garden bed online for Christmas. Let's put together a garden bed, if it's here. If not, then we'll do that tomorrow. I may have just gotten bit by a mosquito. Oh, I forgot to show you the cherry tomatoes. Look at that. My garden bed did not arrive yesterday, so it's the next day. And we're gonna put it together really quick. What better place to put a garden bed together than on a bed? So far, I would say that this 40 something dollar garden bed is very easy to assemble. It's really straightforward. It seems like it's gonna last a really long time because it is tin, so I'm really pleased with it. I actually think I might like this garden bed better than the one that we built by hand. Because the one that we built by hand is nice, but also wood rots and it's just pine. So I know it's not gonna last a really long time. And I feel like this metal garden bed on top of being stronger is going to be relatively easy to disassemble if I need to move it. If there was ever a point where we were moving, I would like to have a, a bunch of these garden beds because then I could take them apart and then at least have the frame, even if the soil would have to be left behind. I don't know, it's a really nice garden bed. It's just a 
nice, cheap, affordable option. I'll link it in the description if you want to get one. It's from Walmart because it's more than $35. There's free shipping for most places in the US. And I decided to go with brown because it was a couple dollars cheaper and I don't really care about what color it is. Now that I know what this garden bed looks like, I might want to get a couple more just like it. I'm probably gonna wait until after the holidays just because I know that the mailing system is very stressed right now. So for now, this is just gonna go in the patio until I can get soil to fill it because we just got a tornado warning and I don't want it to fly away because it is very light compared to the wooden garden bed. I'm gonna be uploading a lot of gardening videos to this channel. Also, this is just kind of my personal channel, but I want to upload a lot more garden tours and like just document the development of my gardening adventure throughout the year. So thank you for hanging out with me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you later. Goodbye. Yeah, we're done.